Steamboat Bill, steaming down the Mississippi. Steamboat Bill, a mighty man was he. Oh, Steamboat Bill, steaming down the Mississippi. Going to beat the record of the Robert E. Lee. Hello and welcome to It's Free IP. I'm your host, Felix Chaplin, and I've been getting comments asking me to weigh in on Mickey Mouse entering the public domain. This video will go into legal stuff, and I'm not a lawyer, so take everything I say with a grain of salt and bear in mind that this is not legal advice. Also, while you're here, why not click the like and subscribe buttons and slip us a couple bucks on Ko-fi. It's linked in the description. Anyway, on with the video. As soon as we rang in the new year, YouTube got flooded with videos about the Mickey Mouse cartoon Plane Crazy entering the public domain. <coughs> Sorry, my mistake. I meant the Galloping Gaucho. <coughs> Wait, really? Those two Mickey Mouse cartoons from 1928 got completely ignored because everyone was focusing on Steamboat Willie? Huh. Well anyway, even this channel made immediate use of Mickey and Minnie Mouse in the Pussyville Public Domain Day special, which you should also go check out. This celebration of our newest free IP came with some warnings that you can't use Mickey Mouse as freely as you may have hoped. In all the videos I've seen about this subject, people bring up that Mickey Mouse is trademarked, but they generally don't go any further than that, so I'll be filling in that particular gap in this video. Trademark works very differently from copyright. While creative works are only protected by copyright for a finite amount of time, trademarks last for as long as a business remains in operation. While copyright aims to protect artists by giving them exclusive control over their creative works and the ability to profit from them, Trademarks are made to protect consumers from being tricked into buying counterfeit products. Say you go to a grocery store and grab a box of Frosted Flakes off the shelf. This video is not sponsored by anyone, by the way. Thanks to trademark law, you can safely assume that you are, in fact, buying real Frosted Flakes instead of a fake, potentially inferior product that's using the brand's packaging to trick consumers into buying it. The Disney company has spent the last century building a brand that's known for being family-friendly, and when you think of Disney as a brand, what's the first character that comes to mind? Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Sorry, Mickey Mouse. In fact, the company itself is even referred to as the House of Mouse sometimes. Therefore, it only makes sense that they would trademark the Mickey Mouse character, the logo that uses his ears, and even the name Mickey Mouse. So if Mickey Mouse is no longer copyrighted but is still trademarked, it's probably going to be super hard to actually use the character in your own works without getting into legal hot water with Disney's army of lawyers. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? All you need to do is use Mickey Mouse in a way that doesn't infringe on Disney's trademarks. If you start a business like, say, a law firm or a landscaping company, you most likely won't face any legal repercussions if you use the 1928 version of Mickey Mouse as your business's logo or mascot. This is because you're not in competition with Disney. In other words, since the Disney company isn't a law firm or a landscaping company, the use of Mickey to represent these businesses wouldn't be using a trademark in a misleading way because Disney isn't in those businesses. If you have ambitions of making products that are made by Disney, such as making shirts or toys of Mickey Mouse, you do have a few options available. One is to use your own branding that makes it abundantly clear that your products are not in any way affiliated with the Disney company. Another option is to parody the Disney brand. The more obvious the parody, the better. If you sell shirts with 1928 Mickey Mouse on them with prominently featured text that says something like not Disney or fake Disney, Disney's lawyers will have a very difficult time making a case for why a reasonable person might get confused about whether or not your products are affiliated with Disney. I don't want to spoon feed you every last detail about the history of trademark parodies, so when you're done with this video, Google Chewy Vuitton Dog Toys, Dumb Starbucks, and Starbuds Cannabis Dispensaries. A more recent example of a trademark Disney character entering the public domain and being used for a highly profitable creative work is the 2023 indie film Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. It's a live-action horror film, and the premise alone is so drastically different from the child-friendly Winnie the Pooh cartoons made by Disney that no reasonable consumer would confuse it with a legitimate Disney release. So the people who made the movie didn't have to face any legal consequences as a result. Mickey Mouse is getting the exact same treatment, so I expect the results to be similar. That's all the time we have for today's video. Once again, this video isn't legal advice, and I'm not a lawyer, so take everything with a grain of salt. If you know of any other strategies to use Mickey Mouse without getting into legal trouble, be sure to let us know in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to like this video, share it with the Mickey Mouse fans in your life, find the Kofi link in the description to donate a couple bucks if you can afford it, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell so you won't miss what comes next from It's Free IP.